Hey YouTubers, I thought it was about time I did a video on my Arca Swiss F field camera. I've been featuring this camera in my last few uh, photography uh, kind of outing videos and I didn't talk much about it and I said I was going to do a review eventually and here it is. This camera, the F field, is another in a lineup of cameras called the F line from Arca Swiss. And uh, they do have them packaged as named cameras, but you really are best to think of the F-Line as uh, a huge set of modular components you can plug together to make into a variety of different types of cameras. So this one, though, is packaged and named. It's called the F-Field. They don't call it the F-Line Field for some reason. They just call it the F-Field. The idea of this camera is to give you a very small monorail camera, thus having all the advantages of a monorail camera, but one that's not too heavy and not too bulky. So to, to meet that goal, what they did was they used the, uh, the front standard. They really call it a format frame. Uh, the format frame is from their 6x9 camera. And the rear format frame, which determines the size of the film you're going to shoot, that's a 4x5 on this camera. You can get an 8x10 format frame and just slide it onto this guy and make it into an 8x10 camera if you do that and uh, replace the bellows with the appropriate bellows. So the combination of these smaller format frames and the addition of this leather bellows, which is extremely pliable, uh, makes the camera really versatile. On this camera you can shoot anything from a really short focal length lens to, if you put an a extension on here, a, um, a long focal length lens and still keep a very compact kind of setup. Right now I want to go real quickly through kind of the features of the camera and the setup of the camera. So what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to pull it off of the tripod. To do that I'm just going to unlock this lever here and slide the monorail off of this bracket. The bracket could stay on the tripod or you can take it off and stow it in your bag. So now I've got the camera off. If you think back to my prior video on my Arca Swiss F-Line, you'll recall that it had a really long bracket and two rail parts that kind of slid into it. That's called the telescoping style. This one is called the collapsible or folding style. So it's actually self-contained and pretty amazing. So I'm undoing this lock screw here. And then I can basically pull the rail apart and fold it on itself. So this is the camera ready to go in a bag. From what I've read on the forums, people don't tend to prefer this style of rail, but um, in my experience, it's a lot quicker and easier to set up than the telescoping rail. Um, I think the people that like the telescoping rail better are probably shooting longer lenses, and so when you start extending this, ra this rail with a rail extension, it starts feeling a little less stable. Um, I'm shooting lenses that are 250 millimeters or less, so this is just about right for that. And I like the convenience of all the parts being on kind of one unit. Okay, so the opposite, it, you know, setting it up, you do the opposite. So now the rail is locked into place. Slide the camera onto the tripod bracket. Lock that in place. Now I can extend the uh, front carrier out roughly to where it needs to be. Um, as I mentioned before, on the other Arca Swiss, these are the focusing and focal length adjustment knobs with locks. Let me throw a lens on here. There's one improvement that they've made. This is a newer camera than my F-Line Basic. Um, they've improved the lens and back locking mechanism. Uh, the F-Line Basic kind of has a, has a fiddlier and harder to actuate mechanism. This just snaps into place. You can turn it a bit to make sure it's locked. Now the lens is on. To switch the back from landscape to portrait, you unlock the back. It's identical to unlocking the lens board. Put the back back on. I always get this a little wrong. Snap it into place and you're done. In terms of movements, it's the same as the F-Line Basic. These funny shaped knobs here lock and unlock 
the tilt mechanism and notice we have detents and these knobs lock and unlock the swing mechanism another small change between the uh, F-Line Basic that I showed and what are essentially called the classic function carriers, that's these cars that carry this stuff, is the um, shift lock mechanism. It's not going to be easy to see. This is a little duckbill shaped thing. On the F-Line Basic, there's just a knob that you twist. No great difference. This is just really easy to actuate. You just kind of squeeze it and that releases the lens board so that you can shift it. Same thing in the back. These cameras are pretty much completely symmetrical. So anything that works in the front works similarly in the back. I'll flip this back into portrait mode because it's a little easier to see things. Okay, so got it back together. Uh, that's kind of it for how the camera works. I mean, view cameras are actually really easy. Uh, this stuff in the middle is just air. you got a, a thing to hold your lens and a thing to hold the back. What gets complicated is the movements that you can do, why you do them, when you do them, uh, all that kind of stuff. And then when you're getting used to a camera, it's like, which knob do I use to release the camera for a certain movement? That kind of stuff is sort of complicated at the beginning. But um, ultimately, these cameras are extremely simple. There's no automation of any kind. So... Uh, once you learn the basics, you're good. Okay, now that I've kind of described the camera, let's talk about the pros and cons of this particular camera. First off, it's relatively light for a monorail. It's over three pounds lighter than my F-Line Basic, and the F-Line Basic is not all that heavy a camera to begin with. This camera weighs in at just under five pounds, as set up here. It's a little probably hard for you to see what I mean by as set up, but with the tripod bracket, the rail, and all the parts you see on the top, it's around five pounds. The uh, F-Line Basic is around eight and a half pounds. It's relatively compact. I can collapse it to this size, and you can see it doesn't take up much space here, and then the monorails are designed to either come apart like I demonstrated in my prior video on the F-Line basic, or this one actually has a folding monorail. The camera has all the advantages of a monorail camera in terms of the extent of the movements you can make, uh, essentially the freedom of movement. You can make large movements. It's got a lot of movements. The front and back standard have all the same movements on them. Usually field cameras, especially the wooden folding ones, have some limitations as to what you can do on the front or the back. The camera doesn't really have that. It has a lot of versatility. You can put really big lenses on the front of this. Some of the smaller field cameras don't have much room for a lens up here, so it kind of limits the types of lenses that you can put on the camera. This camera doesn't really have that kind of limitation. This leather bellows is a big pro. As I mentioned before, it's very flexible so that you can shoot really short lenses or reasonably long lenses easily. Generally, you won't have to carry around multiple bellows with you unless you're shooting extremely long lenses. This camera, like all Arca Swiss cameras, has detents in the right places. So what I mean by detents is the standards can tend to lock lightly into the square positions. And that's pretty important, in my opinion, to be able to do things by feel as opposed to having to double check things by sight. Uh, so to me, that's a big deal, and pretty much all Arca Swisses have that feature. It's modular, as I mentioned before. If I wanted to have geared rise, I could change out this part and get geared rise out of the camera. It costs more money, but it's something you can easily swap out and do. As I mentioned in my other Arca Swiss video, the camera has just really excellent build quality. Uh, it's kind of like a Swiss watch, or you could think of it being built like a Macintosh if you don't hate Macintoshes. Um, it just, there's, there's nothing really to complain about. It's simple in design, but what they did design works extremely well. It's very well thought out. And uh, the user interface, if you want to call it that, uh, the way the controls work, they're the same front and back. 
The camera's so well thought out, you feel like you're using a really quality instrument. It's really enjoyable to use, in my opinion. The pros are so pro that I kind of think of it as the perfect camera. I know it was my grail camera. Um, you guys that have been following me, you've watched me go through three prior 4x5 cameras, and that was all because I didn't want to spend the big bucks. I put off investing in one of these for a long time, finally got a good enough deal that I decided to just go for it. And I'm glad I did. It's kind of funny, you spend all this time trying to find a way not to spend money, and in the end, you should have just spent the money. Okay, well if you know me, you know I'm always going to point out cons. So let's talk about some of the cons. First off, these cameras are really, really expensive. And, uh, you know, it's all relative, but in, in terms of 4x5 monorail cameras, you can get them pretty reasonably on eBay. Um, not Arca Swiss cameras, but uh, other brands like Toyo and um, Cinar and so forth. Uh, whereas Arca Swiss is really not so much. Um, you're probably going to have to spend close to $1,000 just to start looking at Arca Swiss cameras, and certainly not this one. I'm talking uh, at the $1,000 and below, you're looking at older ones that aren't in the F-Line. You might be able to get an F-Line camera around $1,000, but you're going to wait to get it because they don't come around very often, and that's the second con. They're relatively rare. The parts are out there. If you want to buy them used, you got to wait a while before you find them. If you want to buy them new, you're going to pay a fortune, and you're going to wait for it to be delivered. Uh, if you go to B&H and look up Arca Swiss parts, you're going to find that they all have a six to eight week wait. So that's kind of a bummer. Um, but, you know, as I've mentioned before, they're a very low production, family-owned business. So uh, I guess that's what we can expect from, you know, that kind of a company. They're not a giant multinational corporation. If weight is your primary goal, and by that I mean lightweight, this probably isn't your camera. It still weighs close to six pounds. Um, my Chamonix weighs, I think it's around three pounds. I need to reweigh it. Uh, so, you know, this is twice as heavy as the Chamonix, but those are all trade-offs, in my opinion. Uh, it's still a con if you want to go ultra lightweight. Uh, in my opinion, this guy offsets the con with features. Overall, I would say this is one of the greatest cameras I've ever used, and I feel fortunate to actually have it to pull out of my bag. Uh, it's really a joy in use, and uh, I can't recommend them highly enough. So that's it for the F-Field. This is my go-to camera these days. Uh, I'm definitely going to keep my Chamonix because it's so light and I might find a good use for that on occasion. Uh, but this is the camera that I want to shoot when I think we're going out and shooting. So there you have it. If you have any questions, you know what to do. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you later.